There are loads of advantages to disc brakes, but there's some massive headaches too. And the biggest of all the headaches is when they start honking at you like a goose. Now sorting this problem isn't as hard as some people would have you think. And in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how you do it. Squealing disc brakes is caused by one of two things, moisture or contamination. Now if your brakes are clean and dry and still screaming like a banshee, then the chances are they're contaminated. Not only is the noise annoying to both you and everyone around you, but it also dramatically reduces your braking performance. There are many things that can contaminate brakes, the most common being lubricants or brake fluid from your bike. Many will tell you the only way to resolve this issue is just to replace the discs and pads, which is very expensive. But you only need to do that in extreme cases. In the vast majority of times, you can solve this with some cleaning and a sprinkling of know-how. Right, let's go to the bench and have a look at what we're gonna to need to do this job. We are going to need a screwdriver and a pair of pliers to take our pads out. Acetone, better known to you and I as nail polish remover. If you cannot get your hands on that, which just goes down to the shop, it's a couple of pounds. However, alternatively, you can use isopropyl alcohol. Both will do as good a job, but for me personally, I've had better results with the acetone. You will need some fine grit sandpaper. Around about 320 is what you wanna go for. If you can lay your hands on it, go for this type of paper, which is known as wet and dry. Me personally, I've done this job a few times and I just find the wet and dry a better type of paper to use. Also, if you do a bit of home DIY and you've got a sanding block, you'll find it easier to wrap your paper around a sanding block. You don't have to have one, but it's handy if you've got one. Some brake cleaner. This is a product by a company called Crankalicious. I've been using their, this particular product for quite a long time now. It's the only product of theirs I use. And the reason I like it is because it's in one of these little squirty bottles. I, I'm just not a fan of those aerosols. You fire it, it goes everywhere, and it's gone in no time. This you've got a bit more control, and you get a little bit more for your money, so I thoroughly recommend that. You will need clean cloths. Now, I personally recommend that you use a cloth like this, a microfiber cloth. Uh, you. Don't bother using kitchen towel. As soon as you start rubbing a, a, a disc rotor with kitchen towel, it just falls to pieces. This is the best type of thing to use, a link cloth, but there's nothing wrong with a cut-up t-shirt, just as long as it's clean. Make sure you don't use one of your old rags that you've used on your chain. The cloth must be clean. And a wire brush. I personally find that this type of brush which is a, a brass brush is a little bit softer and not as aggressive, but yeah, and a wire brush. Now I've put links below to the more obscure items on, in this list and where you can pick those up. A few other top tips for you. Clean hands is so important and ditch those greasy workshop gloves. You don't want to make this problem any worse than it already is. And as I've always said, and I'll say time and time again, any budding home mechanic a maintenance stand like this is an absolute godsend with its quick releases and its adjustable this, that and the other. You can pick these up online for about £30. First job on our to-do list, let's get the rotors and the pads out. And that is a lot easier with our trusty maintenance stand. that's my wheel and my pads removed from the bike and the first job is to deal with the rotor now in my case I'm going to be removing my rotor from my wheel for two reasons first of all it's a little bit easier to do this job with the rotor removed but my main reason for doing that is it's a lot easier for me to demonstrate to you what I'm doing when it's not attached to a wheel now if you want you can remove your rotor from your wheel however word of warning if you've got a rotor where it's bolted to the hub with the six bolts then to put that rotor back on again you're going to need a torque wrench to torque it down otherwise it will wobble so only remove your rotor if you've got the correct tools to put it back on again center lock disc removal is quick and easy to do using the right tools I'm going to show you how to do that now Pop your disc removal tool in a large banner and literally crank it undone. Quick and easy like that. First step, 
clean your rotor with your brake cleaning fluid and a cloth. Don't forget, use a clean cloth and clean both sides of the rotor. Once clean, give the braking surface a light rub with your 320 grit sandpaper. Only go lightly, don't forget once again to do both sides. As I was mentioning earlier, if you've got a sanding block, then this can help a great deal in keeping the pressure nice and even on the surface. You're doing this not to clean the rotor, but to remove the scoring on the braking surface. And also, because the braking surface is roughed up a bit, this can help to clean the brake pads that little bit further. Once you've done both sides, give the, the rotor another quick clean with your brake fluid and pop it to one side. And from this point on, don't touch the braking surface of the rotor with your bare fingers. Next on our to-do list, your pads. Take a close look at the pads, inspect them, see how much braking surface is left on the pad. If the pads are nearly worn out, don't waste your time and your energy, just replace them. Now, I did a video uh, a couple of months ago on alternative brake pads, link down below. So you've examined your pads and you've decided that there's plenty of life left in them and they're worth saving. Grab your wire brush and give your pad a thorough going over both sides to remove any light dust or dirt. Good scrub with your brush. Once you've scrubbed your pads with your brush, grab yourself some kind of container, a cup, a plastic tub, whatever, and drop a little bit of your acetone in there and then drop your pads in. And now what you need to do is you need to give your pads a thorough clean in that acetone. If you've got an old toothbrush, that's great. If not, a clean cloth will do just as good a job. Give them a thorough cleaning all over with that acetone, paying attention to the breaking surface, giving it a good rub, rub the acetone in and give it a good rub with the cloth. If you've got a pair of rubber gloves, use those. If not, rinse your hands off after you're finished. Now we need to sand our pads and we need to use roughly 320 grit paper. Most important thing is lay the paper on a flat surface and when sanding, hold the pad perfectly level with the paper. You don't want to be rubbing at an angle, you want it perfectly flat. Light circular motions is all you need. When the paper gets dirty, move to a clean bit of paper and just do this until you've got a nice clean braking surface on your pad. Once you've finished sanding your pads, grab your brake cleaner and give your pad a thorough cleaning. Don't forget, once your pad's all cleaned with your brake cleaner, don't put your fingers on the braking surface. That's our rotors and our pads all sorted. Now we can think about putting it back on the bike. But before we do, let's just give the brake caliper a quick clean because if this was caused by contamination, then there's a good chance that that could be contaminated too. So squirt plenty of brake cleaner all over the caliper and give it a good rubbing over and run the cloth through the caliper to clean any potential contaminants off the caliper. Now that we've got clean calipers, we can put our pads back in. Now, quick tip for you. With things like pad axles and other small nuts and bolts, it's always a good practice to use a small amount of copper slip on the thread to stop those nuts and bolts sticking. That's the stuff there, copper slip, also known as copper grease. So what I'll do is I'll apply a tiny little bit to the thread before popping it in the caliper. There you go, all sorted. All I need to do now is bed them back in and give them a thorough test in. Now, while we're on the subject of annoying disc brakes, why not check out that video up there where I get rid of that annoying rubbing problem. Or alternatively, if you've had more than your fair share of disc brake problems, then why not just check out that video down there where I try out some new cycling tech. Thanks for watching.